Hello guys. So in today's discussion of pharmacology, I'm going to discuss about one of the very important topic which is the H1 antihistamines. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about their mechanisms, uses, side effects and important considerations. So H1 antihistamines work by targeting histamine H1 receptors. So these histamine H1 receptors are mainly located on smooth muscles, especially in the bronchial and nasopharyngeal lining, on vascular endothelial cells and in the central nervous system. So histamine binds to these receptors during an allergic reactions causing effects like capillary dilation which leads to hypotension and edema, bronchial smooth muscle contraction causing bronchioconstriction and increased nasal and bronchial mucus production. So you know what is the function of these receptors right now? What is the physiological action? So what happens by blocking these receptors? So H1 antihistamines prevents these allergic responses. That is what we need to know here. So remember guys, there are two main types of H1 antihistamines, first generation and second generation drugs. So the first generation antihistamines include drugs like diphenhydramine, promethazine, right, meclizine, doxylamine, all these are the drugs which are present in the first generation. So these drugs can cross blood brain barrier. So they cause significant sedation which is often utilized therapeutically. They also have anticholinergic effects leading to side effects like dry mouth, urinary retention, tachycardia, dizziness and even tinnitus. So some of these drugs like uh, diphenhydramine and uh, doxylamine are commonly used as sleep aids because of their sedative properties. So however, they can also cause like anti-alpha adrenergic effects such as like uh, postural hypertension which can increase the risk of falls especially in the elderly. This is what you need to know also. Now when we move on to the second generation antihistamines which include loratadine, desloratadine, cetrizine and fexofenadine. So these drugs are more selective peripheral H1 receptors and do not readily cross the blood brain barrier. So their CNS effects like sedation are significantly reduced. So this makes them ideal for long term use in managing allergic conditions. Now let's look at the clinical uses of these drugs. So the first generation H1 antihistamines are versatile and used for managing allergies, anaphylactic shock, pruritus, motion sickness, insomnia and nausea such as like hyperemesis in pregnancy. For example, diphenhydramine is often used uh, for its anti-emetic and sedative properties. And when we talk about the drugs like second generation antihistamines on the other hand are primarily used uh, as anti-allergic agents and for managing pruritus and anaphylactic shock, particularly when non-sedating option is preferred. So it's important to note that H1 antihistamines are ineffective in acute hydratory angioedema attacks, which is a key point for your exams also. So despite their benefits, we know that these drugs have contraindications, particularly the first generation antihistamines. They should be avoided in the patients with benign prostatic hyperplasia or angle closure glaucoma as their anticholinergic effects can worsen these conditions. So these are the warning signs what you need to remember. So by this we have completed all the important points regarding H1 antihistamines.